dear president of the EPP, Joseph Dole, dear Anne Kenny, dear friends. This Congress, as previous speakers have mentioned it, takes place at a very important moment in our collective lives. Over these past few years, we have gone through great difficulties and we came across tremendous challenges. European Union as a whole had to face the most serious institutional, economic and financial crisis since the fall of the Berlin Wall. And for many among of us, in our living memory, there is no such crisis reached, reached at such dimension in social and political way. Happily, nevertheless, the other past part of this crisis is now over. I am convinced that we will come out of this period stronger and more united than we were before so that we can seize these times of economic recovery and reinforcement of the cohesion that binds us to the European project. And yet, for that very same reason, it is important to recall that this result did not happen by chance or with through the plain passage of time. Firstly, we should underline that we overcome the most acute difficulties because our peoples demonstrated that they could withstand great sacrifices. They have done with the realism of those who can look the simple facts of life in the eye and understand that the burden of debt and the lack of competitiveness will not disappear with mere po po political rhetoric, but with effort and resolve. In truth, this effort and this resolve were essential to avoid the worst in the present, but especially to render possible a new perspective of greater prosperity in the future with greater freedom for the new generations. Secondly, we cannot forget that at the European level, we have adopted a wide agenda for transformation and improvement of our institutions. This enabled us to defend and uphold the euro and to equip it, our institutions to deal with both financial and sovereign crises. We created new mechanisms and procedures which led to the deepening of the monetary and economic union and made it possible to assist the efforts of the countries facing greater difficulties. We created a new threshold of responsibility and solidarity with which we have relaunched the European political project and we gave back hope to the Europeans. Finally, this collective effort and this agenda for European transformation produced results because we have had in the European and the national institutions, politicians and governments with the courage to take on change and the reforms which were needed to give a sense of purpose to all the sacrifices while bringing about a different and better future for new generations. It's fair to say, in general, that these results bear the imprint of the EPP. Now that the elections for the European Parliament are approaching, and uh, now that our adversaries have set out to blame us for the consequences of the crisis, trying to exploit electorally the sentiments of those who have suffered the most and the anti-European feeling brought about by the, the, the crisis, it is very timely and just to stress that our leadership saved Europe and the Euro, freeing many of our countries from the responsibility of old policies of a socialist nature. We must say this with pride and very openly. It was neither the populism nor the demagoguery of our adversaries that generated the economic recovery. Quite on the contrary, it was our determination and our resilience that inspired in our peoples 
the will and the belief needed to beat the crisis. We are well aware that the road of recovery and economic growth still requires time. This entails patience and persistence. But through our leadership and our effort, we shall know how to face the overly dangerous simplifications and the castles in the air that we so often find in the populist speeches and, politic and, and politics. With our leadership, we all will be able to demonstrate that it's possible to maintain a course of budgetary discipline and fiscal responsibility, while at the same time sowing the seeds of structural change and the basis for the sustainable growth that will create better jobs and more income. We have until today adopted the more realistic choices, the choices that strike at the root of our problems and do not overlook difficulties. For this reason, our choices were never the easiest for or the friendliest ones. But people know that easy and friendly can frequently become expensive and painful. This is why it is preferable not to sell our soul to the devil of demagoguery, but instead to hold on to the coherence which has risen to the momentous challenges we face until today. But now we are very much like at the onset of the crisis, and we remain confident in our ability as Europeans to build a common house that shares strong values and the collective ambition that bind our destinies. This common house does intend to be a fortress, too heavy and burdensome for the European citizenship or close to the outside world. It is the very opposite. We support a more open society, looking both at the single European market and at globalization. We support a society of democratic values and rule of law, such as the one that has inspired the Ukrainians who identify themselves with the European project. This is the common house for which we have fought and in which we continue to believe. Dear friends, I ask you your permission as a Portuguese and European as well to a final word. It is a word of gratitude and recognition because on the José Manuel Durão Barroso role and work at European Commission. He was, for the past 10 years, the President of the Commission, and he is lefting his job after these times of great challenges we have faced. I am sure that his character was essential to the reinforcing of our European institutions and to this new era that we are entering. I know you are no more candidate for the next Commission, but I am sure, José Manuel Durão Barroso, that your knowledge will be very useful for us, for us all in the near future in our European institutions. Thank you very much.